The boys here at Hot Trick Hockey want to know something. Is poop a pain in your grass? Well, if the answer is yes, then you're going to want to talk with our latest sponsor, Mr. Pooper Scooper. Jeremy and Jeff have amazing services to offer you and your furry friends. They have top-notch customer service and will go the extra mile to ensure your lawn is looking great. All the products they use are safe for you and your pets. Let's be honest, no one likes to pick up after their pets, so call in the professionals at Mr. Pooper Scooper, and I guarantee you won't regret it. They can be reached at 519-819-1261 or email mrpooperscooper at yahoo.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram. And what is going on, everybody, all of you beauts and beauties out there? It is episode number 82 of Hat Trick Hockey, which is always brought to you by our good friends over at GL Heritage, the official beer of Hat Trick Hockey. This being episode number 82, it's the Marty Straka edition of Hat Trick Hockey. 15 seasons in the NHL, 954 games, 257 goals, 460 assists, 717 points, plus 67. He's an Olympic and World Cup gold medalist. He's a world junior and Olympic bronze medalist, and he's also won a championship in the Czech League. Not a bad career. Rob? What's up, man? How was your weekend? How did everything go? Well, it's still going. Um, Obviously, us recording on a Sunday. Yeah. So I uh, go to the Meg Club, and they're talking about our episode and whatever. And uh, so we had to, I had to figure out some uh, statistics that we were wrong on. So um, what's his name? Uh, Ryan Whitney was traded for... Chris Kunitz. Oh, okay. It was Kunitz. I knew it was a Chris. Right. And Chris Latang was, and that was in 2010. And Chris Latang was drafted by Pittsburgh in 06. Played there his whole career. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. well, then tell the boys, tell the Meg boys that they can feel free to send us stats whenever they want to. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, they don't, they don't know until we say them and we fuck them all up. So. I know. And then they're, uh, then they all hop on there. Oh, yeah. No, but they don't, they don't say shit. They just, it's funny. It's funny. But he's yeah, like, well, fuck you guys off on that. I'm like, whatever. I, I don't know no fucking shit hey, about hockey. We, we got a Chris right. Okay. So I knew it was a Chris. Yeah. And he was, and Ryan was traded. Yeah, and we were within five years of it, so yeah. So I, I, I think that's win-win, win-win. <laughs> yeah, we're close. We're close. We're close. Yeah. Whatever. Um, so what else do you do? How is all all of those boys? Oh, they're great. It was awesome. We we always have a great time. We solve world problems and mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Figure out life problems and yeah. I'm is. into the monster today, man. I fucking cannot sleep. Ooh. Worth a shit. Yeah. Well, you had all that fucking. You probably need a bacchiotomy from all the rest you had uh, when you had the flu there. Oh, it was brutal, man. I got an ab workout, too, from throwing up. Um, so, as we were saying off the air, I went on live last night, TikTok live. We gained a bunch of followers through it, like 6,500 likes and stuff. It was crazy, man. I was only on for like two hours or so while I was watching the Wings. Thanks for the invite. Dude. <laughs> I said about 14 times on there, like, normally I have somebody with me, but uh, I didn't even know where you were. I was just like, ah, you know what? He's probably out doing his thing. So Uh, there's a phone. You just just call the phone. Oh, God. Like the text I sent that you just answered today. (laughs) Yeah. But you got the number, didn't you? (laughs) (laughs) Fucking guy. Um, Yeah. He still hasn't even answered me yet, but I figured the time change and everything's probably all weird. Right. So yeah, he said, no problem. Don't worry about it. And he said, I I appreciate you asking me first. Yeah. We're just going to line him up here so we can get him back on here with us. We're not going to tell who it is though. Yeah. Everybody, everybody already knows. (laughs) Um, Should we hop into it? Sure. Let's go. So All Star Weekends this this well this coming weekend shall I say so the skills comp will go Friday the fourth that will be at seven thirty, um, and the All Star game will go the next day the fifth we'll start at three o'clock the All Star game I think they're still doing the tournament style type thing is that how they're doing it again this year because they say All Star you're asking the wrong guy no I I'll watch I watch the skills competition. I will not watch the the All Star. I'm the same way. I usually only watch the skills comp. I like the skills comp. It just bores me. It what's bores your me. What's your favorite event? Flat shot. Oh, the hardest shot. I like yeah. the shooting accuracy. 
Yeah, that's always a good one too, right? Just because it's hard to do, and nobody does it like Ray Bork did. Like ding, ding, yeah. ding, ding. Like all four, like four for four. He went right. I think he did it more than once, didn't he? I'm pretty sure Ray Bork did it more than once. Four yeah, for four. Pretty sure. That's crazy, man. But but I'm sure uh, I'll hear it about it at the Meg meeting when these yeah. guys tell me how fucking shit we are on our stuff. Yeah, guys, look it up for us, okay? How many times did Ray Bork win the yeah. Don't show? ever just comment on on the on yeah. you know our interviews or whatever. Fucking chirp. Who cares? I don't yeah. care. I think it's funny. Um, but yeah, so look look for that. Speaking of the all-star game, Nathan McKinnon will be out for the all-star game after that hit by Taylor Hall. He's gonna be out till at least February 10th, they're saying now. Um, oh, I saw that I finally saw the hit. Yeah, did you see his stick up? I know, but it was like he had made a pass. And then just as he seen him at the last second, he, you know what I mean? Like yeah, he went, went to protect himself and, it, and his stick come up in front of him. Bam. Like, yeah, he, he got crushed. The thing was, crushed. is if he would have just let, if he would have left the stick down, he would have got smoked and he might've been a little like shook up, but he wouldn't have been like, laying there might've been a chin. shoulder right to the, to the chin too. Yeah. Right. You know? he got but rocked. I wonder if uh, Taylor Hall is going to have to pay retribution for that. Okay, and that was that was actually going to lead me to my next point. So these teams will meet again February 21st at 1 o'clock in Boston. Mm -hmm. So what I was going to ask you is, do you think there'll be fireworks? Do you think they fight? I don't I don't know if McKinnon's a fighter. I know Hall He's isn't. Fought. He's fought. Nathan but, McKinnon, I think, will whoop Hall. <laughs> I don't know, the two big, strong kids. You yeah. know what I mean? So Last time Hall fought, he broke his leg, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> right remember oh, he went he went shit happens, right? all awkwardly and shit yep but i so expect like, and, and that's uh, it right i expect high ankle like, sprain speaking of the abs too you were saying well just before we came on the air that they won their ninth straight too right so they're yes. uh they're yes. on a heater right now yeah. as well yeah. so and without him i don't know can they stretch it out without him but did you did Pretty you think, team there. did you think that the hit was clean yeah, it just, it was just a bad outcome. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, but in, in all honesty, you know, like a lot of these coaches say, know who's on the ice. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't think Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall hits as much as Austin Matthews. Mm -hmm. I think. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, yeah, would I expect that from him? Absolutely not. Yeah. But he Hall? fucking crushed him. Yeah. Well, Hall's knocked guys out on hits, man. Yeah. Yeah. So keep your head up, man. Fuck me. You yeah, you got to keep your head up. Protect yeah. yourself at all times, like we said before. Especially a star player like that. Mm -hmm. You would think even though he's a star player too, like, but but he's not like a, a, an Ovechkin. No, no, no. You know what I mean? You, you, uh, when Ovechkin's out on the edge, you have to be afraid. Yeah, I guarantee you, Hall don't throw that hit on Ovechkin. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like, Ovechkin would explode him, <laughs> would kill him. Um, speaking of injuries and not might not being might not be at the All Star game in Vegas, it's going to be Adam Fox to Rangers D man. Yep, he's like off to a roaring start, to amazing start, and he's got so he's got an upper body injury now. So they're not saying they haven't given how long he'll be out or anything like that. They're just saying that he could be out for the All Star game. So you know what? When it's a guy like that and he's the main part of your deed, you just say, oh, hey, listen, he's going to be out a week yeah. and a half, two weeks, and just cut out the All-Star yeah. game. Let him yeah. rest. I take it out, no problem. Yeah, no problem okay. whatsoever. What does the All-Star game mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's Absolutely nothing. For the fans, pretty much. But that's Like you said it. before, if it was worth something and you, you know, the, 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 uh, where the we get, like, league got it, other than the other league got yeah. the home ice like they did it in baseball or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I could see you sending them, but yeah, yeah, for just well, you're playing to win, right? Yeah, exactly. And now, but this all star game is it's just shitty hockey, mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. Zero defenses, mm -hmm. you know, so whatever. A couple notes on the Flyers. So, first one, um. They ended that 13 game losing streak. Yep. So that's good. Against, against uh, LA? I think so. I didn't look to see who it was. I just seen that. I'm pretty sure it was LA. So that's if it all, wasn't, the boys will chirp me and I'll fucking. So that's all here. over now. And um, the other thing, too. So Flyers general manager Chuck Fletcher 
was told by management that he was given pretty much a blank check to fix the team. So that being said, with what do you think they'll do with Flyers captain Cole it Giroux? It was LA? Yep. So what do you think? Do you think Giroux stays or is he gone at the deadline? Because he's in the last year of his of his he had like an eight year, like sixty six million dollar deal or something like that. He's in the final year of it. Do you think they trade him at the deadline? He's a stud. That's what I mean. Do you give him a chance to win? I don't know. I don't know. Well, well who knows what they're going to do with the team? Are they going to go to a rebuild or what do they That's call it? I mean. Revamp or rebuild? Reset. I think it's yeah. called a reset now. They don't want to call it a rebuild anymore. I'm pretty sure it's called a reset. Yeah. No. But I don't know. Yeah. Oh. So that guy, he was given blank check, they said. So to do whatever he wants, to sign whoever he wants, to do, they want him to get shit in in there his way not ron hextall's way oh, so, oh my god hextall didn't choose kale mccarr everybody bobby, clark, bobby clark fucking lit him up bobby clark put him on blast <laughs> yeah. bobby clark let me tell you something about bobby clark everybody bobby clark is a non-giver of fucks okay he doesn't he does not care and he will say whatever he's always been like that and that's what i love about bobby clark bobby clark's a beauty then he can yeah. pop those chomps out and smile at you and just have nothing there. <laughs> when I think of a Stanley Cup winning smile, I think of Bobby Clark. I know that one where he's got his arm around the cup and he's yeah. just smiling. He's, it's yeah. all front teeth are missing. Yeah. You've seen it for about 65 years. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, Oilers. Oilers put a beating on the Habs last night. They beat him 7-2. It was Kane's first game in the lineup. It took him 11 minutes to score a goal. Habs took it in the face last night. Twice. <laughs> it was just yeah, they got their ass kicked. I'm telling you, man, the Oilers now have seen the two of that's what four in a row. Now? Yeah, but like you know, one minute they're fucking selling the farm, next minute they're fucking playing in a parade. That's Whatever. the Oilers. That's the Whatever. Oilers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get it. No, I'd love to have the have the cup back in Canada, but you hey. Let's let's think with our heads and not our hearts. Right? You of everybody should know what it's oh, like fuck. to sell the farm and book. I'm the game. biggest <laughs> scumbag when it comes to that. With a lion or with a lion shirt on and a fucking leaf. Lion shirt and the leaf still upside down, <laughs> and it'll <laughs> stay that way until they fucking when win the first round. I think hopefully, hopefully for Leafs fans' sake that they can get out of the first round this year, but we'll see. Um, before we go to this motherfucker to the ground. <laughs> before we go to our interview, last little note here: Crosby netted his 498th goal. God. It's Just crazy because when you come to think about it, because Ovi's at like what seven something. When you yeah. come, when you come to think about it, like how far they're apart in goals, but think about how much time Crosby's missed. Oh yeah, he's been hurt a lot, but he plays. He plays so fucking hard, right? They both do. But I got, I got a question for you: Who's the big defenseman on Detroit? Uh, Mo they Sider. played, they played, uh, he's a kid too, right? Like Mo, Mo Sider. Okay. So fuck did he roughhouse Crosby, uh, when grab they him, played grab like, him by his body. Oh yeah. Like it, that kid was taking no shit from nobody. He, 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 he's a big, big, strong defenseman. He's, he's like, he's, I think he's like six, four or six, five. And he's like 220 pounds or something like that. And yeah. they, they have another kid coming up through the ranks. That's bigger than him really? coming up. Yeah. The, the Red Wings blue line in about five years, average height's going to be like six, three, six, four. Eisenman's a freaking <clears throat> So wizard. They got some kids coming up that are fucking some big boys. And the one, I think the kid that I was talking about, I forget his name. I wish I had his name off the top of my head, but this kid coming up, they're saying that if they play him and that like cider kid, if they play them both uh, at the same time, they said, don't come across the blue line with your head down. Cause they said, if you, and they both have said it, if you come across our blue line with your head down, we will hit you. That was exactly Where, where's it. cider from. Is he Canadian or American? No, or he's uh, he? I think he's Sweden or something like that. No, he's German. I'm pretty okay. sure he's German. Tough kid. He's Tough fucking kid. big boy. He when he just didn't even think about it and grabbed Sid by his fucking visor. Yeah, I was like, "Oh boy, don't no mo, no mo." Like, no, no. Like, I'll give you respect, but you're not gonna push me around. And then next thing you know, he grabs him, and I'm just like, "Holy!" Did holy. you see what he did opening night to Victor Hedman? 
So no. o- opening night, Victor Hedman, they're playing the lightning at home. So Victor Hedman, the puck was sitting at center ice. It was a commercial break. Well, Hedman like the, skated over to grab the puck or whatever. Well, as he was skating off to grab the puck, Sider skated over, lifted his stick and grabbed the puck. And then it caused the scrum. <laughs> so, I just, love it. Yeah, the kid just it. does. Kid just doesn't care. He's honestly, he's growing, this shit up. he's growing to be one of my one of my favorite Red Wings. So, yeah, I like it. So, on that note, we're gonna talk about more Wings and Leafs on the back half here. But uh, on that note, we should flop it over to our interview. Eh? This fucking guy, eh? absolute beauty. This motherfucker comes on with us, chilling in his backyard in Florida. He's like seventy five degrees. He's stretching and shit, drinking Bud Lights. Having a fucking good old time. We're here on bonfire, fire, freezing uh, our balls off. He's got the bonfire and beers going. Fuck, Seventy man. degrees in Florida, and yeah. we're fucking minus yeah. fourteen. Yeah, clubs on the way to him. His golf clubs mm-hmm. must be nice. Yeah. But uh, anyways, everybody, I really want you guys to enjoy this. This was a great interview. He was uh, kind of had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. So action pack. So everybody enjoy. We got Luke Sanko with us. So everybody, here he is. Enjoy. I'd just like to thank Michael Spence for getting us Luke Sanko. Mm-hmm. Really appreciate it, buddy. Roll it. Woo! 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 Well, this next cat here with us, he's a former Lakeshore Hab, Leamington Flyer, spent five seasons in the States. I believe he played some university there in the States with uh, Midland, I want to say. Yeah, Midland. Yep. Midland yeah. Midland. Luke Sanko, welcome to the show, buddy. What's going on? Fuck, thanks, boys. First podcast ever, so uh, fired up to be here, man. Oh, we're popping awesome. the cherry, eh? We're popping yeah, the yeah. podcast yeah. cherry. <laughs> well, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous, ah, actually. I, dude, I seen your setup. How the fuck could you possibly be nervous? Two yeah. Bud Lights chilling there outside on the patio oh, in yeah. Florida, struggling. Yeah. struggling. Oh, yeah. Struggling. Yeah, tough life down here, for sure. <laughs> That's and 70 degrees. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Minus 17 here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what what uh rob and i want to know is like uh do you got room for us down there or what yeah exactly hey I'm, I'm actually moving into my house tomorrow morning i just went and fucking spent the whole bank load on beds and shit like that and uh moving in tomorrow morning so boys are more than welcome maybe we'll do a podcast one day uh down on the down on the ocean or something like that on my boat yeah. or something <laughs> So are you, are you down there? I'm for busy. I'm too busy to get down yeah, there and do that. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. I'm down there. Uh, it's a three year, our company here, our, uh, our janitorial oh, okay. caravan. We've got a three year contract. So I'm down here for a couple of years. I'm just focusing on getting, uh, getting the visa and getting over here to work. So, so are you like single married girlfriend? I got, a, I got a girlfriend back in Windsor, but she comes down every couple of weeks and stuff like that. I just booked her tickets in for July or June. Oh, so okay. She, Man. That's pretty sweet though. That's a nice gig. Yeah, it's good. It's a good little spot down here. It's perfect. <laughs> I guess awesome. you haven't just grin ear to ear the whole time he's been on with us. It must be horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, up, Rob and I are sitting here like, oh, you kidding me right now? Another two weeks? <laughs> that was brutal. All right, man. We'll hop into it. So you're a are you a Windsor boy or are you county boy? Uh Decumsey. So little oh, little outside of Windsor City there. Boy, but, okay. Uh, yeah, grew up grew up in Decumsey playing for the uh the Eagles, the Cumsey Eagles. Oh, okay. And then you went somewhere for your like 18 U, right? Yeah. I went, I went up to Toronto. I went up, my dad had a few buddies that were coaching in the OJHL and stuff like that. And kind of, uh, went up there to test my luck and see what, how it was. It was, it was pretty fun. I played on a really, really good team in Georgetown and, um, and played triple A there as well. So it was a good experience. I went there for grade 12. So I don't know what that is. 17, 18, something like that. Yeah. And, then, uh, actually started to have, uh, couple seizures and stuff like that i was getting fired up and before games i was going and and i would like kind of tap out and and drop out and stuff like that and i ended up having to go in the hospital for two weeks and I had all these cords hooked up to me they'd wake me up at night and flash lights in my eyes and trying to trying to get me a seizure again while i was doing it and for two weeks they couldn't get me to do anything i couldn't do anything i signed myself out of the hospital two weeks <laughs> two weeks in i'm like listen i gotta go back i gotta play hockey so then Georgetown didn't want to sign me for legal reasons and stuff like that. And that's when I came back to, uh, to Lakeshore and uh, I actually see the 73s there shirt. I had, I had, I think I had a little bit of a chance to go to the 73s when I was coming back there. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Dan Manella, a couple more, a couple of my buddies played there and reached out to me, but I had Perch and or JJ Percy. I'm sure you guys know these guys, Perchy and then Hunter Corp and Duggars and stuff like that on Lakeshore there. So I kind of decided to go that route, which probably not the best choice now that I, now that we went through it, but that was okay. We, uh, I had fun. I had fun, mm. but yeah, started, started up there and then kind of came back here. So <laughs> sorry, I just kind of gave you the whole lowdown. <laughs> it's all good. Well, interview's <laughs> over. <laughs> all right, everybody have a good night. On the drink. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to Decumpsy. You uh, played Triple A in in Decumpsy. No, it's just double, double, yeah. double A, yeah, double A in Decumpsy. And yeah. uh, but you guys had a big tournament, right? Yeah, we we hosted the uh, the national championship when I was uh, or like the OMHA on. T- if you win the OMHA, you go to that. It's like yeah. the R Cup for the OJ, but it's for the Double A team or whatever. So mm-hmm. we hosted that. We ended up losing to. Uh, um, I don't know, some Niagara team, but, uh, we got to, we got the host in and bid and we did this huge ceremony and, uh, all the parents were great. So that was, that was something I'll remember forever. Colin Moore was on my team there. Um, we had a, we had a really good, uh, 95 year in that midget major. We got the dressing room in the back of the rink there. We, I remember my grandpa, we actually built all the stalls. We got the money cause we were hosting the tournaments. So we got to build our own dressing room back there. And that was sure. just something, something that I'll remember forever for sure with those boys. How old were you then? That was midget. That was midget minor. So, so you're like uh, 16, 17 ish. 16, 17, yeah. yeah. Just before kind of draft year, and then kind of everyone kind of goes off, you know? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That'd be sweet though. Build your own dressing room the way. Yeah, it was so, yeah. You my my Gigi, he's a big uh, handyman, so he loved it. He's yelling at us, "Hey, you go this!" <laughs> always wanted to kill him after, but it looked really good. We stained them all really well. They're they're us. They're still in there today. They're still in the locker. So whenever I go watch my cousins, I just remind them, "Hey boys, you know those stalls in there? Don't, don't mess around, you know." Yeah. Respect. Don't fuck them up. <laughs> Did you carve your name in it? Yeah, hundred percent. I got one under the finger. <laughs> I was gonna say shit. You should have. Yeah, exactly. Now, hey, did now they said you were a forward? Did you play wing or did you play center? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was usually winger. I'm not the uh, not the most pretty skater in the world. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever watched watched a couple of the games or whatnot. I know you guys got buddies in, in town, so um, not the prettiest skater. So I like to stay on the wing and work on the walls and stuff like that. You know. I see that by your minutes. Holy fuck. Yeah, it's uh well that's another story. I'm sure we'll get into that, but oh, the refs the, the refs in Nebraska, oh, fuck, I just didn't like them. And sometimes, you know, we, we didn't have the best teams two of the four years there. There was one year that I had under hundred minutes, and then the other year I get two thirty, but half the time you're down seven one to Adrian. Adrian's the best team in the league. It's a Saturday night. All I want to do is go home and get away from the rink. And it's four, it, there's four minutes left in the game and I get a hooking minor. I'm like, dude, are you fucking serious? He's like, yeah. say one more word, Sanko. I'm like, fuck you. Like, <laughs> and he's like, you're done, 10 minutes, fuck, like, 10, thank two, you. five. Fuck. I get 18 minutes and four minutes left in the game. It makes no sense. And yeah. I'm out, I'm showered and I'm already drinking at the, at the, at the bar across the street. <laughs> Tough times. <laughs> so you have to start the shower for the boys quite often. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So. No, but I, I held my own. I was, you know. I tried that. That league, it was a good league. Um, like I said, when you played those big boys, Adrian and Minot, they were they were really hockey games. Everyone I know coming from Windsor, I thought, you know, I'm going to play club hockey in that ACHA league and stuff like that. Uh, um, you know, I didn't I didn't think that this was going to be that competitive and stuff like that. But as soon as, like I said, I played Adrian my first game. We got beat 7 or 8-1, and I'm like, oh, this is a wake-up call. Let's get her going here. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Um, there's, there's, uh, that is still really, really good hockey. So, mm-hmm. it was, uh, yeah, that was that was a fun, fun time, other than getting kicked out with four minutes left in the game. That, that was a little fun. Who was your favorite, like, uh, like, growing up, like, squad and player? Well, I think uh, – yeah, if I, if I if I say anyone different, I'll get in trouble here. Um, but for sure, my favorite squad was the Red Wings, and then um, my dad's my dad's best friend is uh, is Chris Draper. So he's kind of been my mentor and everything. <laughs> everything he tech, he, we still have our little family group chats. We mm. talk every single day. So he's he's the one guy I looked up to uh, all the time. I I grew up in the Red Wings dressing room. You know, I'd be running yeah. around, and bring me out on the ice and got taught how to fight by all the boys and stuff like that. So that's funny. That, maybe that's, that's where you... I got it all. Maybe that's where I got yeah. my mouth from. from hey. the Red Wings. So we can <laughs> that's... That one the grapes too. <laughs> that's funny that you say that because good friend of our show is Darren McCarty. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, so he's yeah. been on the show a couple times. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Oh yeah, Max. Max a great guy. Max a great guy. He actually he played 
um, in Flint there. I'm sure you guys went over it and stuff like yeah. that when my dad was in my dad was in the organization in Flint up there. So that was when I was a little older and got to uh, got to really remember how he played. But he's a uh, he's a mean fucker. That yeah. dude. That drapes uh, drapes has got to be on cloud nine, just fucking drafting his boy and everything. Like that's oh, a dream dream come yeah, true. Yeah, he stopped. Keenan, he you know what? You know, all due respect, he's worked he's worked really hard. Keenan's Keenan's a horse. I he well, he played in Omaha last year. Um, uh, and then he went out to the uh, BCHL this year. So he's, you know, he's put on a couple inches, put on a bunch of weight. And he's, he's a horse. I seen him, uh, you know, I get the Snapchats from drapes and stuff. And there's, I hope he plays there, man. I hope he gets there. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be awesome. So he's fired up. He's working hard. He actually just committed to Michigan. So he's uh, oh, beauty. He's, you'll, have to, you'll have to get him on the show one day. Yeah. Hell yeah. We're down. Yeah. I'll dad I'll, too. We'll I'll take dad you. too. If dad like wants. Michigan yeah, needs yeah, another we'll stud, eh? If yeah, dad exactly. wants to come on, we'll, we'd love to talk to Chris too. We'll sure, talk to I him can, both. I can hook it up for sure. Beauty. But now we're, uh, we're here for you right now. So we'll talk yeah. to you. Yeah, right so how me. did, how did you end up in like Lakeshore after all that? Did you get a call? Were you invited to camp? Like how did all that work? Yeah. Out? Well, it was mid, it was mid season there. Cause I went, I went into the hospital there. Yeah. I, I think I played about seven, eight games in Georgetown that year or, or was healthy scratch and, and we took warmups, didn't get put in, whatever. I was right at the bubble there. I was a bubble player and I was getting fired up. And then that's when I went into the hospital for two weeks and I came back with about, I don't know how many games you play in Lakeshore regular season, 40 or something. I came back yeah. with like 28 or 30 and uh, I was just kind of coming back into Windsor. No one would sign me up in Toronto legally for reasons. And, yeah. and Lakeshore and Essex actually uh, reached out, just boys on the team kind of thing. And like I said, I had boys in, in uh, Lakeshore there um, that kind of just made it easy. I lived right around and right around the corner in Russell Woods. I was, I was two minutes away from the rink. They were playing at Atlas now. So it was kind of a no brainer for me, but yeah. uh, once I got me and me and Servi didn't really see eye to eye. So I'm not sure if you had Servi on the show yet, but <laughs> Rough uh, no. up there, eh? The rough yeah. life there in Russell uh, Woods, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love anyway, it. So yeah, yeah. I just kind of, I had a couple, two different options there, and kind of chose Lakeshore. And yeah, it was, it was fun. It was good. It was good. It was a good time. I had a lot of good boys on there and uh, buddies that have uh, turned into friendships for sure. Well, fuck, Lakeshore is always good too. Yeah, yeah. The boys, they they make sure. Just, uh, I may, he probably didn't like the penalties to be honest. And you know what, now that I'm going to turn into be a coach, I probably won't like the penalties either. I just had to learn how to play on the line and he didn't really like that. So I think we saw eye to eye. And then in the end, I mean, I came in with 24 games left. I was leading their team in points, me and Corpy and JJ, we were, we were killing it. And then in the end, like game five of the playoffs versus Dresden, I remember he scratched, he told me not to come to the bus. He texted me, he said, Oh yeah. Don't come to the bus today. We're not bringing you to Dresden. I'm like, what the fuck? I text the boys in the chat. I'm like, what is this, man? What's going on? And then, yeah, I guess he texts Corpy that too. So, anyways, we told all the boys. We both showed up on the bus. He let us come on the bus. He just kind of cockeyed me while I walked by him. I just gave him the fuck you kind of look and went to the fucking bus. Uh oh. Yeah, Ronald. Look, I got him as voicemail on my phone. Just, <laughs> just don't answer. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Lakeshore, you put up 30 and 25 games. You also racked up 141 minutes too. Yeah. So, yeah. So see, did I mean, you fight you know, much I, there? yeah, I fought, I fought a few times. Actually, there was a couple of games. I, I remember I fought against Amherstburg was one of my big tilts. Like again, though, down, down seven, one, I just picked time and place, you know, time and place, pick your spots and, and you go, but, uh, tried to Do you remember who you out. fought from Amherstburg. Um, yeah, he's, uh, the bigger guy. Uh, ah, what's well, that, there's man? a bunch of those boys out in Amsterdam. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mitch Amante's cousin. I know him. He's cousin. He's from Mitch Amante's cousin. When I played with Mitchie, I met him more. Um, mm -hmm. Anyways, yeah, you know, a couple couple fights. Actually, I remember in Strathroy, I tilted. I had a good one in Strathroy versus some guy. And up in Strathroy, there's like a walkway up top. And yeah. you got all the old people screaming at me. I'm fucking flipping them off, giving them luck. Oh, <laughs> then I got to go stand out there after I got kicked out of the game. Like, oh, <laughs> Whatever. Fuck, I'm a talkie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's how that goes. But who I tried is, who to focus is... more on, you know, straggling that line and staying in the game as far as getting in the fight and getting out. I'd rather score a game-tying goal or something like that with two minutes left. Fuck, fuck yeah. 
Well, I, I gotta, I gotta thank before we go any further. I gotta thank uh, Michael Spence for hooking us up with your number. Like, yeah, you, that kid's a beauty, and they, they listen to him and him and his brother Layton listen to the show all the time. So, yeah, yeah, they're beauties. I remember them from the rank. They're, uh, they're, they're beauties. And, and actually, I, I met him at. I don't, I don't know where I met him the one or not met him, but I, I seen him at the bar this summer and he mentioned some, Hey, my boys are doing a podcast. You got to get on and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no worries. And then he reached out to me a little bit ago and he's like, Hey, are you still interested? I'm like, Fuck yeah, are you kidding me. Let's go. Yeah, he's like, he's like, you got to get Sykes on the, sh- on the podcast. And I'm like, okay, great. Who's Sykes? Yeah. 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 And he doesn't and send me Luke Sanko. Yeah. He just yeah. says me, you know, Sykes. Okay. No, no, I don't. I don't yeah, know. I yeah. Know. Cause then Rob's like sends me the info and I'm like, I like search your name and it, it was cause you had said Sanks. So I'm like, looking yeah. up, I'm like, there's no one under the fucking hockey, whatever <laughs> with that no. name. I'm like, I need to like, <laughs> I need hockey PB I has, has basically uh, nothing on you. It's a leap. Excuse yeah. me. Elite prospect. That's the only one yeah. I use. Yeah. yeah like, I think, I don't know if, I don't even know if that OJHL is on there or whatnot, but um, I think so. Man. I fuck. I never paid attention to those goddamn things. I was always, cause every time I'd pull them up, I'd be first in penalty minutes and I couldn't even focus on my points because penalty minutes would be so goddamn high that yeah. everyone that I showed it to would be like, oh, fuck, look at your penalty minutes. Your so, OJ yeah. HL is, it, it, yeah, but you good. were pretty much in the top 10 in scoring on every team you played on or even, yeah, even, yeah, other even than that first like year, top obviously. seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, you put up was, good. Uh, I think you were fifth on the Flyers. You were fifth yeah, on the yeah, Flyers. We, we, had a, we had a really good team. That was, that was hands down my favorite year of hockey. Like, 20 we had i we had we had 12 or 13 20 year olds um Jesus. you know just running the show going through the league like i remember we had langer like our we were tough to mean langer david story scott emerson colin moore you know we had, mitchy was a nutcase like we had we had just we were abusing teams that year it was great yeah you guys had a bunch of guys that were over 100 minutes yeah. Now I got I got some information from uh, one Riley Jones that's been on this show a couple times for <laughs> us, and he's a total beauty. Yeah, and he I'm said sure you got you, you got to bring up some Emerson stories. Oh yeah, he's he's greatest. I actually texted him the other day, Emmer. He's he's my best buddy. So he actually uh, he played in Georgetown um, when when we were we were both sixteen and we were trying out before I played for Mississauga. Before I played for Georgetown, I played for Mississauga Senators and AAA up there. And I lived at Emmer's house and oh man, this guy's, this guy's a full on beauty. Like he's, he's not, he's nuts, man. He doesn't give a shit. He fights the biggest guys. He loves it. He comes out bloody smiling. Like he's great. And he goes, he goes to the net hard. Like he's always in the front of the net hammering guys. He misses them, runs into the boards. He's nuts, man. He's crazy. (laughs) It's great. uh, No, and he'll, and he'll fight anyone. I mean, one story that comes to mind every time I think of Emmer, we went for a pregame skate in Limo and it, him and David story, they were both from Toronto and I lived at Emmer's house and story was his buddy. Um, so Emmer signed in Limo before David and then D actually uh, signed in right after him. So D was like, Hey, can I live at your house? So they both lived at my house. Those <laughs> fucking gong show, man. These two guys are best friends, you know, they're from the thing. So they're obviously going to fight. They're sharing a room. I, I won one time I came up there. I forget what they were fighting about. Emmer had some magazines under the bed or something like that. And he found them and he started whacking at him. He's like, man, oh no, no, this, this is what happened. I got, they, they fought in the magazine too, but he got a haircut from my fucking aunt Tanya. And he came back with a shaved head. Emmer came back, he shaved head. He still was like, man, what the hell happened to your head? He's taking videos of him. Don't take a fucking video of me. He gets up. He's squaring off with them in my spare room. I'm like, I'm not getting in the middle of this. You can mean that. <laughs> Emmer just clocks these still are throwing bombs. I'm screaming. I think Langer was downstairs. I'm like, Langer, dad, Langer. <laughs> you mean that. Just they're let him go. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, they're tough. They, they fought like that. They fought over the front seat all the time. They're fucking shocking. Because <laughs> I'd drive every time and be like, yeah, boys, let's go. We're out of here, you know, and he'd be like, shotgun, and they fucking run <laughs> start fighting like kids. Child, man, it was the greatest. But so, they're, so, they're, they're both my best buddies. They're great. So that was what Riley was talking about the Billet brothers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, that, that's them. They're the they were your brothers. billets. Like, so, like, I, I, after that fight in the in the spare room, I don't know how it got back to Tony, P, Tony Perovsky. And Tony called me in the office the next day, him and Quinn on the boys. And they're like, dude, what the fuck happened? I'm like, man. I don't know. These guys are nuts, man. But I'm not getting like I'm gonna be out for weeks, man. I'm like a clock, you know. So 
So then they brought them in. They're like, boys, you get, they had a meeting with all of us three and they called my dad on the phone. It was hilarious. I'm like, fucking meatheads, man. Like, what are you supposed to be on the same team? <laughs> so funny though okay. but they obviously were best buds right oh, so we still talk all three of us have a group chat to this day with my younger brother and they're, they're really good with my younger brother and stuff he was a little younger back then so uh well you have to you gotta get him on the show with us because like we we want all that stuff you know what i mean like yeah. we're like if you if you go and look at our podcast it's a lot of essex boys right but we mm. haven't built out our connections yet so yeah. like they're getting bigger obviously we've yeah. had anthony i quinn on here you know what i mean oh, yeah. like when, when that's how i got there actually how did you guys get mac then who uh i believe Cardi. that was through tree tree got him for us yeah. and then he said it's ever since and then he's been friends with us ever since yeah. No way. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, he's, yeah. A, so, he's a really nice guy. We, yeah. We've talked to a bunch of guys. We've talked to, so him, uh, Gomez. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, yeah. I looked it up today on the, on the thing, I'm looking the boys up and I'm like, dude, they got fucking Stanley cup champions on here. I get home. I'm like, I'm yeah. this. I put on a new shirt. I'm like, <laughs> goes out, <laughs> buys a shirt. Does like, his hair. Fuck, boys make me nervous but we're good now boys. yeah i told you man the boys, it, it, it gets a lot easier we get a lot of people like holy fuck man i couldn't sleep last night like yeah, you know why? i was so nervous it's yeah, like 100%. It's, it's just the guys sitting around the garage having beers you know what yeah, i mean exactly. like 100%. it's awesome or, or your bonfire yeah that would have been extra. sweet or out on the patio on in in uh in january <laughs> yeah fuck that so that noise. hey where did you get in your first like real like hockey fight like throwing down first real first real yeah. one i think was in was in georgetown i had i had a coach his name was actually this guy's nuts you look him up one day it's, his name's greg walters he is an absolute nutball played in the nhl and the ahl big tough mean guy and he loved emmer like me and emmer made the team as a 16 year old and i got cut but then i still lived at his house and stuff like that and he um he loved Emmer, but I, I, you know, I had to do something to make the team and I had to do something to get noticed. And I, I went out, there was a, an exhibition game in Brant in Brampton. And we had like, there was like a little tournament in the OJHL mm -hmm. or fucking 12 teams there. And yeah. I forget who played Burlington or something like that. And I got fucking whacked by this big guy. Just, just clunked like four times. Oh, fuck, bang, bang. But I was lucky enough to, like I said, I grew up, and before I went out there, I, I got taught by Brad Maya in the Red Wings when he played for the Wings. Yeah, so wow. I went on the ice and he taught me how to grab and hold and duck and tuck my chin and stuff like that. So I didn't get beat up too hard. But I mean, like everybody says, you just got to get into it. And once you do it a couple of times, you start learning things and, you know, a couple of tricks, go under the arm, slash the arm, do something, you know. So yeah. I got a few tricks up my sleeve now that I've learned over the years. But that first one in Brampton, I... Uh, I didn't do so well. <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> big whack. Who I probably should have asked the guy to go. He was a little taller than me, but like I said, I had to prove my spot. You know, you know, I gotta. I, I want to make this team. I want to go. I'll do anything to do it, and let's do it. It doesn't well, look awesome. as bad. You got, you got taught how to fight by Mayday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's oh. he's he's an animal. I see him all the time on, you know, the Vegas broadcast now, and I'm. I'm like, man, that guy literally grabbed me and was like, let's fucking go. Like, drop the glove. Yeah, at, at the Joe. <laughs> at the Joe. At the and you're how old? Center ice, center ice. I was 16, just about to go away to grade eight That's or grade awesome. 12 and just go up to uh, Toronto there. So I got uh, I got a few lessons in from him, and then uh, that was it. That was all. Then That's go crazy. practice. Go get your shit kicked out of you. <laughs> go have fun. You're never going to learn unless you get a couple lumps, though, right? 100%. 100%. Yeah. That's how you got to learn. So, and each, each each fight, you pick up something else, something better, exactly. something new. Some guy right? does something to you, and you're like, oh, man, that was a good didn't one. Like, where did that Where did that left just come from? <laughs> didn't didn't see that coming. <laughs> that guy had some epic scraps, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was, he was a nail gun. Like, oh yeah well him rob ray like those guys were two of a kind you know like they're they're yeah. like the the chris nylons yeah. you know they used to oh, go yeah. with domi all the time too those oh, two just and never yeah. no no fear no fear That's whatsoever fun, man. like crazy you know yeah it's crazy when guys like that just know their role like you know what i mean they yeah like, they, they like know yeah, the you hit yeah. that guy you're i'm gonna break your nose I'm like you know what that. i mean like pretty much like that's how it is yeah. now what, yeah. what was tony peroski like getting getting coached by tony peroski because oh, uh jamie awesome. mcdermott was there as well but he had yeah. just had the heart attack when you came right when i he, he had it just after yeah so he or i think he had it during that year like when i was there yeah he, he did it. and yeah. um 
yeah, so he was he was kind of in and out the rest of the year. You know, he was kind of recovering and stuff like that. But Tony P was awesome. I mean, he was he was calm, cool, and collected out in public. But when we got into the room, he would fire it off. Like I remember one one game he came in. We were I don't know who it was against. Fucking one of the better teams because clearly we were we were down two or a couple goals coming into the first intermission. He fucking came in, stormed the door, bars the door open, kicked the recycle bin right at Geezer and fucking. <laughs> All those that started screaming, he's got his because he was blind in one eye or had eye issues. Okay, I think. So he had the fucking yellow work goggles on, like safety goggles, but they were yellow. <laughs> so the boys are like, "Come on, man!" I got my hand. Yeah, shirt, I was just like gonna this. say, put your jersey over your mouth. I'm laughing like, oh, dude, he was the best. But like I said, he was he was dialed in out on the ice, and I loved how he. He made, our, he made all four lines good. Like, we had four good lines, and we rolled them all night long. Like, we were a team that just kept coming at you and kept coming at you and kept coming at you. And like I said, we were tough. Our fourth line was was just as physical as our first and just as talented. Like, we were moving, and it was good. It was, it was, it was an awesome team to be a part of, and he led us right to the end. And, uh, well... I didn't end my junior year, junior years as well as I wanted. I got suspended in game five for a fucking hit from behind in Lake Sh- or in, in Limo. And then we went, I got suspended for that game and game six. And we ended up fucking losing in game six to uh-huh. the Nats. And if we would have went to game seven, we would have got like the best record. And, and then you get that bid, you know, the 15 that gets in or whatever. So if we would have went to game seven, we got it. But the other, the other team up North got it. So we didn't end up going. So that was kind of a, Shitty way to end, uh, shitty way to end my junior career. But Tony P made my last year uh, really, really enjoyable for sure. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. awesome because, like, he's he's a legendary coach around here, taking oh, Essex, yeah, Essex to the highest level. You know, then going to Leamington, doing the same thing, and mm-hmm. all we've ever heard is great things about Tony Prosky. Now I've I've texted him, and he hasn't returned my phone call. So. <laughs> Classic. He's yeah, yeah buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's yeah, big, yeah. He's the big dog. He's the big dog. He is. <laughs> he is. But so, you know, like like Jamie said, he's really quiet though. Like yeah, yeah. That's why, like, out in the he, public, you'd never see what I saw in the room, you know. And right. he would joke around with the boys, come in shooting the shit, and it was nice because we had uh, a couple of the younger coaches as assistants, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, is it so is it safe to say that he's probably your favorite coach you've had? Yeah, I think him and him and Walt like Wally. Like if Wally asked me to go run through a wall tomorrow, I'd fucking drive there and go run through the wall. Like yeah. I would still, I would still do it for that guy in Georgetown. He was like, man, like he would draw up drills on the boards and be like, "Okay, hey, let's go five bang four bang slamming a stick on the boards. And people would just go to their spots and fucking drills started. Like he had us dialed in and he had everyone on board. He had everyone buying into the system and doing what he wanted. And then he would come in fire and he would joke with us. He'd fucking, he'd do everything with us. He's the best. I think Wally was my favorite coach, but Tony P's right up there too. You know, he was, they were just a little different. Wally was, I mean, Wally knocked out one of the other coaches in second period one time, one of our games. He was like walking across the ice and yapping at the coach because probably Emmer got in a fight or crashed the goalie or something like that. And he was yapping at him, yapping at him. And he's like, fucking Google me, Google me. I'll fucking kill you. Da, da, da. And we got into the hallway and the hallways connect or whatever. It's just a normal rink. Yeah. And he went down there and the, the coach kind of met him halfway and he just clean clocked him, dropped the coach. See, so yeah, just walked out of the building. Oh. So, no, he's not, man. He's crazy. So. <laughs> and that's that. He was like sticking up for our team. So that showed the boys, you know what? Yeah. Fucking let's buy in. I think that was probably early in the year. And <laughs> I'm getting assault charges yeah. Yeah, the for you guys. Just, Let's yeah, fucking go. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he fired on all cylinders all the time. That's hilarious. Yeah, I kind of awesome. noticed too that you got into junior hockey like older in this area, right? You were like 18 or something, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. A little like I said. So I was up so 16, 17. I was in Toronto there. 18, I played uh in Georgetown, and I only played like 30 games. I was getting scratched and stuff like that. We were on a really good team. We made it to the finals. And lost to the Toronto Patriots, um, and then uh, and then that next year I kind of went back of the heart surgery, so I was or heart you know heart issues, and uh, I was out for a little bit, so I didn't get back into Windsor, Essex County area until middle of nineteen year. Played the rest of Lakeshore and played yeah. my twenty year, and holy and shit, went off. yeah. Because normally these kids are in at what Rob like 15, 16, and then they play like four or five years. You don't normally see guys come in at an older age like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it was a little, it was a little different, a little, uh, 
hectic there in the in the mid years of junior. Obviously, I have uh, I have so in my heart. I got you got four valves in I your heart. You, yeah. and I got a I got a fifth one, and when my fifth one kind of snaps and touches my fourth one, I zap out and I kind of like I would like whoa. faint, but I would I would come back in thirty seconds and I'd be like, whoa, what the fuck was that? Like I'd be like, whoa, and and my buddy, my the last the last straw was when I was with, I was in Guelph, living in Guelph at my billets, playing for Georgetown, living with my, uh, my best buddy, Jonesy from Windsor. He came up, Blake Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, he played for LaSalle a little bit too. Um, he came up and he was living with me and we were living together and we woke up in the morning and he asked me, he's like, hey, thanks, you good? And I kind of was like, uh, and then I don't remember anything until the ambulance was sitting at my bed, like getting me on the stretcher. And I'm like, I got up and I'm like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? Like, what are you guys doing? Like trying to touch me and this and that. I'm like, let me get up, take a piss. They made me get on the stretcher and everything. But that was the last one I had until I went and then into the hospital and they couldn't get one from me and put me on these medication, these pills. I actually just got off from last year. Um, and yeah, I was, I've had to take them ever since. So, Fuck. I mean, I, I didn't have one, but that was the last one I had. It was, it was crazy. I would just kind of zap out for 30 seconds and then I'd pop back up like nothing happened, like nothing. But in those 30 seconds, it'd be all blurry. I wouldn't know who's who. Like I had one with my parents one time and like, I kind of tripped out, like didn't know who they were. And was like, Oh, uh, you know, yeah, be getting that that. Crazy, yeah, fuck. you know, you get back and you're like, Holy fuck. But then, you know, like, Hey, can I have a beer or something like that? Like, oh, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. It passed. No, we're good. <laughs> we're good. We made it through. I want to survive in advance. Jesus, just needed man. a big burp. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's nuts. Hey, what rank did you hate playing in the most? Just that one you're like, fuck, I got it. Could have just been hardest to play in, or yeah, I, well, fan, like whatever. what what level of hockey? No, just what rank you hated to play in the oh, most. Oh, rank, rank. Yeah. I mean, um, oh fuck. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Chatham's old barn there, not Thames, but that other shit bag. Yep. Yeah, square one yep. that was brutal. I hated that one. We didn't, we didn't play there, I don't think, in junior, because then they play – chat. oh, yeah, Chatham plays there, doesn't they? I believe they do, yeah. They have junior B. Don't they have – yeah, but don't they have – But they, uh, I think they, they built Thames. another arena. Yeah, they have Did teams, they? then they have the one they play at, and then they have this little other shit one. Yeah, that's very dark. That's the one. That's Probably, yeah, that's gray. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Where, it's where, gray. Where yeah, yeah, the yeah, ice 100%. is gray. The ones yeah, you yeah, ever, yeah, you yeah, ever yeah. have those think, rings like the light bulbs have never been fuck? changed since the 70s never, never there's like four out in the building you're like god damn it man but that was <laughs> that was in my early years but i'm not sure i mean uh, when i when i was up in when i was up in juniors and stuff like that like i never liked going london would always be packed they'd pack it i mean i loved playing in chatham and those big pack barns like chatham hated me hated they would bring sign yeah. fuck you sanko da, 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 the, whole, <laughs> the whole nine yards like i remember we beat them in the semifinals. i'm like swinging my stick around in the crowd and they're all pumped up <laughs> oh my parents to get in the car and go home like i love it yeah that's so funny Hey, uh, where did you get your first uh, junior goal at? Do you remember it? I think I was in, uh, yeah, I was, I was in Georgetown. I was in Georgetown a couple, couple games in, I think. And uh, no, actually, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't even know if I got one in Georgetown. I think that might've been a, a tournament goal, you know, one of the fucking oh. tournament, you know, it doesn't count as a junior goal. I think I got it in Lakeshore though. I got it in Lakeshore a couple games in. I don't even remember. I, uh, you know, probably, probably a dirty goal sitting at the net somewhere, stabbing someone in the back of the legs and tipped off my shin pad and went in or something like that. You know? <laughs> they, they don't ask how they ask how many, buddy. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, I was never afraid to go to the dirty areas, get in the corner, go to the front of the net. So that's how I scored a lot of my goals for sure. And they, they weren't, uh, there weren't many pretty ones, but there were a couple. My team needs a guy just fucking like that. You want to fucking suit up here for us on uh, I just Monday fly down on your fucking helicopter and, <laughs> yeah. you know, exactly. pop in well, and... I actually there's a fucking there's a private airport right here in Naples and I just see sick jets coming down like every five minutes I'm like dude I need a jet like that man I can zing back and forth like what do and I got you can do? fly I us out for golf games to, yeah I don't I definitely don't have to be a janitor or manage a janitor company so <laughs> well and it's a good stepping stone <laughs> <laughs> so now so now junior ends and and you end up playing university mm-hmm. yeah yeah so i um i actually had a skating coach um and he he played 
for my dad back in Flint when Mac played there, when Darren McCarty played at Flint yeah. for his kind of come back up before he won the cup there the last time. Mm-hmm. Um, and his name was Jason Cerrone. And uh, he reached out to me when I was in my 20 year old year in Leamington kind of offered me said, Hey, like, I'll, I, I remember you, uh, you know, good kid, this and that. I see your, I see your uh, work ethic here and this and that. And uh, I'd love to have you here. And that was kind of my only offer. And I wasn't really done with the dream yet you know I still wanted to go play and see what see what could happen and uh yeah I just I went out there I went for a visit uh, on the weekend boys were great showed me a great time I actually uh I fell asleep in in one of the in one of the houses on two couch couch cushions and my flight was at like 9 a.m the next day my dad and my coach came in they're like hey kid let's go buddy I'm like what no but anyway so they showed me a great time and committed there a couple weeks after that and then uh yeah I ended up playing um my full four years there and then um and that was in nebraska right yeah yeah midland university just outside of omaha nebraska so i always tell people from when like i never thought growing up in canada i'd be playing hockey in nebraska at one point Mm -hmm. but yeah it it was good it was it was fun it was it was a smaller school i needed to go to a small i couldn't go to a school with three four hundred kids in the class you know i needed to get my education and, and I need to know the teachers name my name so every teacher knew me smaller so it was, it was good so kind of got through that let me uh um you know work on uh work on getting my uh degree over here and stuff like that and put me opening up some doors and stuff like that for over here and at the same time you know enjoy some hockey and, and keep playing it so mm-hmm. um, great great four or five years there actually uh, with my master's there, it took was, was, was it a full ride or did you have to pay to go there? I was just no, he gave me, I'd say like 70%. So, and then nice. uh, OSAP, OSAP helped me out with the rest. You know, you, you file in on OSAP. So mm. a little student debt to pay off here in the next couple of years, but that's a <laughs> bro. <laughs> you so, racked up some cool. minutes there, dude. Like yeah. I, you hear <laughs> university hockey and you don't see fighting, like fighting doesn't well, happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, 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 there, my, my coach knew me. My coach knew me. So he'd know, like, you know, he he planned the weekends in advance and, and they schedule for the year. And he'd pull me aside some games and say, like, you know, next weekend we're fucking playing University of Arkansas. Fucking gonna smoke them, you know, at yeah. home, you know, like, hey, Sank, here's your green light. Go ahead, go. And I, oh, okay. then I just be like, all fired up. Third period comes around. I'm just looking around. I'm like, I'm going one of you fucking me dead. So it's coming. I was going to say, because we got you for five seasons there. Yeah. And here's the pins. 192, 222. That was a big one. 70 fell off that year. That, but he had, no, so my, but, but he had 37 points in 23 games. Yeah. So that's in. probably why. Next year goes right back up 212 yeah. and then he yeah. finishes her off the farewell fucking tour with 145 <laughs> <laughs> so. so my first my first couple of years there the the big ones and then that third year we had a real good team really good team and i remember my coach brought me in before the year and he's like dude i can't have your yeah. shit again for the third reel year it in all. i'm like reel it he's like reel it in he's like every minute you get over 100 He's like, you're fucking sitting out a game. And I'm like, nah, that's not fair. You can't have one game for one minute over a hundred. Like, come on. But anyway, so we had a great team. You know, we, we weren't losing those fucking games to Adrian 8-1. And, you know, yeah. we were in it. We were in it 4-3. And I couldn't take those penalties. So it didn't give me the opportunity to do that. And yeah. we went, we ended up winning or we ended up going to the national championship that year. Uh, going to Nashville. We played in Nashville's practice bar and it was sick. Um, and we lost to Indiana Tech in uh in the finals with 34 seconds left they fucking oh. scored I mean, three two it was the worst ever man tough goal i was on the ice too back checking like still see it in my dreams man it's the worst, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the worst. like 30 seconds away from going to ot you know three on three ot Want that's it. that's my jam i want to be out there skate you know handle the puck and didn't even fucking get the chance to get there so but you know that was that year i you know kind of dialed it in there and that was uh that was okay and then the next year my senior year you know you lose six seven seniors and now you're the senior and your coach it's a hard it's a hard recruiting year and you you, you can fall 20 spots in the rankings you know and now all of a sudden we're fighting to get in the tournament when last year we made it to the finals and uh you know it just kind of spirals out of control our coach he actually had stage 4 cancer from like the second year i was there he had cancer in his leg and his and his neck and stuff like that so he was out getting surgeries um my second year and then again my senior year kind of came back so that's kind of probably why too because he kind of uh he 
kind of yeah. spun it out of control. And then when he would lose his mind, I would fucking lose my mind and it'd be yeah. all over from there. <laughs> Downhill from there. When your captain goes out and your head coach goes out, it's a gong show. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, like he, uh, he, he, uh, I, I, I owe him everything. He, uh, he extended my hockey career for five more years. Um, and you know, obviously it gave him a little bit of trouble on and off the ice with the penalties and the partying probably, but you know, mm-hmm. He's, uh, he's a great did guy. You, did Luke, did you ever have a fuck you, fuck you match with any of your coaches? Oh, yeah. The Cerrone guy, we like, he, he would tell me, like, sometimes we're fucking fighting after practice. I'd be like, fuck you, let's go. Like, you know, but I think, I think some coaches, you know, listening to fucking spitting chicklets and, mm-hmm. and some of the guys on that podcast talk about Ken Hitchcock and stuff like that, where that, that, that coach is kind of like, they kind of get fueled from that. They like, oh, that. Some, you know, yeah. like they like to see some of their ones. Uh, Wally, Wally, my first one there, I, I, I was too scared to talk to him. Like I was, I was just like, yes, sir. No, sir. Do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> and, Fear uh, is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rob, Rob service. I got into a couple with him when he told me to, when he told me to not come to the bus, you know, I told him to fuck off this and that. And then, you know, they, at the end of the day, they have all the power. They're just going to not play it, you know? Yep. So if you're, if you're a dick and, and it's, it's especially in university, they can't trade you. So it's not yeah. like junior where you're like, fuck you, fuck you. And then this guy's like, Hey, get this guy out of here. Shipping to Essex, you know, it's, it's not like that. So, you know, you gotta be really careful in uh, university, but yeah, I had my fair share of fuck you matches. With now did you and that guy ever like figure it out or was it all always kind of like that? Who, my university or survey? Uh, survey there. Whoever said not to go to the bus. Oh, show up at the bus. No. From yeah. Star River. Yeah, he's still a fucking meathead. He's he's a teacher <laughs> at St. Clair College with the fuck man that AU hockey or whatever. And mm-hmm. he, he was he was my brother's teacher for sports management there a couple of years ago. I'm like, man, if I was in that class, I'd lose my mind on that guy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we just do not see eye to eye. And he he came back the one the one practice with a fucking puck. And he's like, this is my first university goal from like five, six years ago, blah, blah. And then he like threw it in the puck pile. Like he fucking thought it was a big deal or something. I thought, as soon as he blew the whistle, I grabbed the puck and just tossed it over the glass. I'm like, Get this fuck out of here. <laughs> you fuck you, buddy. You fucking university. Oh, shut up. You suck. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> my first oh, university goal. You're such a baby, man. Uh, <laughs> just so you know, Rob, tell him about your fucking reward. Yeah, exactly. Ro- Rob's got a medal. Yeah. Uh, I had three. Yeah. No way. Yeah, I got. I got. I got the SO most improved player. Fucking three years in a row in house league. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Is that a big deal? It's funny that you fucking joke about that because I got fucking in 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 Midland. We did like you know awards at the end of the year for two or three years in a row. I thought I was getting the fucking MVP of the team. I got community service award leader. <laughs> three years running. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's, come on. Coach. That's almost like a lady bang. I thought, I'm like, so we got that in common. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? God damn it. You know, I love giving back to everybody. And like, but I'm like, holy fuck, I got 30 points for this game this That's year. That's hilarious. Know? Oh, that was funny. Now, now, when you played for uh, the River, who who was Essex tough guy? Manella. Dan Manella. Dan Manella. Mm-hmm. I've heard so that name. We didn't, we didn't at, I mean, Lakeshore, we didn't have a tough guy. I mean, Logan Percy was tough. I mean, I was pretty much our tough guy. I was running around like a meathead, the chicken with my head chopped off, just hammering guys and chirping and yapping. So, again, I am not saying Rob Service has no right to hate me because he probably just hated my fucking mouth. And he was like, dude, I'm done with this kid, man. Like, he just came in halfway through the season and he's losing his mind. What the hell is this guy doing? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm fired up. I, I can't wait to coach now, though. You know, I'm down here now. I see, I see, uh, I see the junior teams and the kids over here playing at the rink while I'm fucking mopping the stands. I'm like, oh my god, get me out there, you know. So I'm yeah. ready to be a coach and take take things from each guy that I've learned and you know, kind of give back a little bit. So mm-hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. Rob, yeah. I'm tapped. So whatever you want to ask him, bro, go ahead. Okay. So uh, what was, what was your worst injury you got? Uh, no, other than your heart thing, because that yeah. that yeah, was kind of a yeah yeah. You know what um, I mean, an internal yeah. thing. But what was the worst injury you ever had? I think. I mean, I was knock on wood. I was pretty good. Uh, I, I, I actually messed up my ankle. I don't think it was broken, but sometimes it's worse to, you know, screw up your ankle rather than just break it and get the surgery, you know? So I was out, that was my second year. I had two or three big injuries in college. I never got injured in junior. I hurt my, uh, my ankle there in my first or second year in college. And then my shoulder 
and my knee, the three things, but they weren't, they weren't uh, big injuries. They were just, you know, going to the training room, fucking ice it, little therapy for a couple of weeks. But my, uh, actually way back in the day, um, I, uh, I used to, I don't know. I was a kid fucking me had trying to dive, take penalties, idiot. My dad came out, he was my coach. And he said, he used to call me Hollywood. Like he would like fucking Hollywood. I don't lay on the ice. And then one time I got hit pretty hard. And my uncle Pete was the trainer for our Tecumseh Eagle team. And he went out the door. My dad said, don't you dare walk out that door. He's getting up. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay. So I got up and he's, I remember he called, he talked to me later that night. And he's like, you don't ever lay on the ice again, unless your bone is sticking out of your body or you see blood. And I'm like, all right. And like he was pissed. And I'm like, okay. So I just always, you know, I just, I never told the one, the one time I told my trainer in college, I had a little, I got hit in the head hard. He made me, he, he made me skip the rest of the game. It was in the first period. He's like, Oh no, you got a concussion. And he waved off done for the rest of the night. My dad came down to the room in the second intermission, lost his mind on me. I'm like, man, it's not my fault. The trainer next night, that trainer gives me the thing at the, at the hotel. He's like, Oh yeah, I think you're good. To, I think you're good to go tomorrow. So that was a good lesson to learn. You know, you gotta, mm-hmm. some things you kind of got to say and some things you just kind of power through. So I, I was know. always just, you know, I keep was always, it doesn't I'll, matter unless there's a bone sticking out. I ain't stopping. <laughs> I was always told your leg better be fucking broke. If you're laying on that ice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I did that a few times when I was a kid. And when my dad snapped on me that day, I'll still remember it. I was in the back of the car. I'm like, all right, man, I'm just, I'm not going down anymore. So yeah, yeah when I, all, all my injuries, I just kind of kept pushing. Well, everybody cheers for you when you get up. You're like, hey. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I like that. That's what I love. <laughs> I didn't score a lot of goals, but I didn't stay down. Exactly. exactly. Um, all like- right. My last question for you, Luke, is uh, so they, they have the horn in hockey, which I fucking hate. And I say it every episode. It just, it drives me crazy because when a team scores, that's the biggest cheer and the yeah. horn drowns it all out. Yeah. Now teams like Florida brought it in, Detroit brought it in, which I couldn't understand because yeah. they always had a full building. You know what I mean? So if you took that, if you took that horn out of the equation and got to play your one bumping song that they would remember you by when you scored a goal, what would it have been? Oh my goodness. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's I'm, a fucking I'm, a huge, for I'm, a huge, I'm a huge country guy. So I don't know, probably, uh hell right by uh by luke air church air church i think hell right mm-hmm. okay hell right. hell right everybody's <laughs> going down on a friday oh, night. yeah i know exactly yeah, what I know. Yeah, friday night idea. goal seven o'clock fucking drinking <laughs> beers let's go you know <laughs> fucking right <laughs> That's awesome. uh, that would probably be my go-to for sure holy Fantastic. shit luke this has been fucking unreal buddy you're action-packed interview man this has been great uh, yeah. um are you are you ever down here or what are you ever back here at all or what yeah i think I don't, i'm not sure i i mean with this with this new job that we're doing we're kind of packed with the the everblades right now um playing still so they and then once their season ends you get those graduations you gotta find them yeah in of the, course yeah you know, i mean so you gotta clean after those so stuff like that but maybe in the summer i'll be back uh for a few weekends maybe get back there for a few weekends dude too. hit us up man we'll have some beers play some golf something yeah yeah for sure let's do something let's do something and if i'm back we can maybe do i'll get i'll get one of the boy maybe drapes can come to my house it'll probably be easier and i got i got a nice dock in the back on lake st Clair. We can do right, in, right in person yeah that's yeah, perfect yeah. We'll, yeah. Do right in person. we'll do a little live show we'll fuck yeah we're, do, we're, we're buying it we're buying a camera so yeah. like we can do our like we have the zoom cameras and all that yeah. stuff but we can yeah. set those up easy peasy too yeah yeah but yeah. uh we're, we're buying a camera as well so that yeah we can do we can do something awesome because there's a lot of people that want to do like that we've had on the show that want to do like what do you call it a collaboration with everybody you know yeah like, yeah, yeah and uh yeah, everybody. I, saw, I saw a bunch of the boys that you've already interviewed, and I know fucking seventy percent of them. You know, right? percent. Right. So and I mean, we I could probably know. get a nice little live show going. Yeah, yeah. No, you you awesome. let us I, know I about a co- couple yeah, of your look. boys. Like, and what we'll do is we'll interview them first, and yeah. then you know it's always funnier when when you guys get together, and yeah. then Everybody more stories come up. Oh, remember yeah. when? Remember yeah, when? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For so sure, be for awesome. sure. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll do we'll that for sure. sure. We'll make sure we bring uh, we'll make sure we bring Emmer down for that one. We can we can really get the stories rocking because when me and him awesome. start sitting together, uh, 
there's no end to it. So I'm sure we'll uh, we'll do something for sure. Let's book it this summer. Let's let's get on the yep. dock this summer. We'll do some and hook me up with a couple of your boys from Bell River, and uh, yeah. I'll get them on the show. We'll get Emmer on the show, and then yeah. you know what I mean. And then we'll do a, like I said, a collaboration of the three yeah. ideas. And Fucking right, we'll rock awesome. it out. Yeah, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Well, thanks, thanks so much, boys. I'm gonna uh, go grab another Bud Light and uh, enjoy the night here. All right, awesome. buddy. Thank hey, you. we really try appreciate to stay you safe down the there show. in Canada. Eh? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Try to stay stay safe down there in Canada. Fucking lockdown, doing nothing. Yeah, we we really appreciate you coming on the show. This was awesome, and uh, best of luck with your business and all that stuff. And yeah. uh, we really appreciate you having coming on. Boys, thanks so much, man. First uh, first podcast under the belt. So I think it went pretty good. I'm, I'm fired up. Can't wait to hear uh, it. Oh, yeah. Your cherry's yeah. all over the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. All, right, all right, boys. Talk to you soon, eh? You, thanks you, so buddy. much. Peace. Bye. And there he was, folks. Mr. Luke Sanko. Absolute beauty. Can't wait to hang out with those boys in the summertime, too. That should be interesting. Or the winter when we go down to Florida. Yeah. Uh, or we can go sit on Lake St. Clair in his dad's backyard and barbecue and oh, we're doing that for sure. Play bags. <laughs> yeah, we're but I just want I just want to thank him too because yeah. like you had the COVID, we had to bump the interview, like and he was just all willy-nilly about it and mm-hmm. said no problem. We hooked it up another week after and that's that's what's great about all these guys is everybody's working with us. We're working with them just to make it all happen. Yeah, you're right. welcome. You're welcome, people. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> um, just so you know, too, when I was on when I was on the freaking live stream there, everybody loved that I was calling everybody beauts and beauties too. By the way, so everybody's like, you can tell you're from Canada. It's funny. Beauty, eh? Um, yep. Yeah. So we had a, booty. we had a couple Jersey retirements on. Uh, Saturday night we had Lundquist, which we talked about last week's episode, yeah. and uh, we had Sergey Zubov as well for the Dallas Stars. So both of those jerseys they, they pull out the green uh, carpet, so they say in Dallas, and uh, yeah. they had like Eddie Belfour went through, Mike Madonna was there, just guys like that that he played with and stuff that went right. through, just a bunch of studs. Yeah, Bellows um, was Bellows there too? Uh, I'm not sure. They had Brian a bunch. Bellows? They had a bunch of guys there from when they won the cup. Yeah, okay. So it was pretty cool. It was nice to see. I watched a little bit of it, and it was cool to see some of the current players like Ben and Sagan and all them. Like they weren't on the thing for it, but they were standing there, like just watching it all, like right off, off the bench and stuff. So which is which they should. That's he was a that's, stud, man. That's the that's the fucking history of the team. Yeah. So we'll get into it real quick, Rob. Your Leafs. Congratulations beat- to you guys. Yeah. Congratulations. Your Leafs beat my wings last night, seven four. They played one period. Yeah, they did. The third period. Yeah. Michael Bunting picks up his second career hat trick versus Leaf. Love the guy. Love he, him. He did play good. He did play a good game. Um, the Wings were fucking had him, man. They were up 4-2. And, and to play Pittsburgh the night before, like, I'm and just what? like, how is this fucking happening? I and then know. I started thinking, well, well, you know what? Mrazic gave up some shit goals. Hmm. Total shit goals. Like, rebounds, like, I don't know. I don't know. Just I don't know. rebounds? <laughs> yeah, and, and now you have, if you think about it, you have back-to-back with New Jersey, right, coming up. So now you're going to play Campbell, and then you're going to play Mrazic again? Like, I don't understand Sheldon Keith's outlook on this, unless you're going to play Campbell back-to-back games. I'd play him back-to-back. Why not? I would too, but why would you set this up like that? I get that he wants him to beat Detroit. Mm-hmm. That makes sense, right? Playing against your own club, yeah. You got, you got to, you got to go for it. And you know what? And I'll, I'll guarantee you, Jack Campbell's such a freaking amazing human being. He said, "Let him play that game, and I will play the next two. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he, Campbell will go back to back. He don't care. Though, is a, I would have played fucking Campbell last night. Went with. Mirazik one of the games against Jersey and then went back to Campbell for the second game against Jersey. So would, I would have kind of done them every other. That's exactly what I just said. No, you said you would have played Campbell two games in a row against the Devils. Right. But I said Campbell probably said, let Mirazik have Detroit. Yeah. But I would have said, no, I'm the coach. 
you're playing. That's what wow. I, you know what I mean? If I'm the coach, I will, I want, it will give him some confidence, which he doesn't have right now. No, He's been hurt. He's had so many freaking injuries since he's got to Toronto. You know what I mean? Like I want to give him a shot. I have a very good team mm-hmm. in Toronto. So oh, I'm going to let you beat your old team up for getting rid of you. Yeah. The so Leafs- I'm giving you that game. Yeah, they were fucking firing on all cylinders in the third period, man. It seemed like it was just boom, right. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, like fuck. Uh Thomas. Tom ass. Yeah. Left and went out in the garage and, and started doing his lights. And he's a huge Maple Leaf fan. Yeah. And he started doing his lights. He came back in and he was like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. He, he said, I, th- I can't remember if it was 4-2 or 3-1 or when he said he went out of the garage to do the lights. He's like, well, I'm like, so you missed the end of the game? I'm like, it, 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 the third period was awesome. Like, dude, you missed like, like six goals. I saw the highlights. I saw the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, dude, you missed six goals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking guy. He's, he's, insane. He, he's always up to something. Um, oh, yeah. Jonathan Taves. It's placed in concussion protocol um, as of Friday night. No timetable for the return. I didn't see what happened to him. I didn't see either. I just I was just reading on uh, the NHL website, and they're not even really saying or anything like that. They're not – obviously, they're going to be freaking quiet about it, right? So yeah. he's been placed in protocol. I'm not sure. I'm going to look up maybe for uh, next episode – like what exactly, what is the minimum requirements for concussion protocol? So I'm going to look some of that stuff up. So we kind of get a better understanding on how it works. We know obviously that um, you get pulled out and it's X amount of time and this and that, but, and they have guys in the arena spotters and this and that too. So, but I'm going to really look all that up and find out just exactly how all that works because i see it all the time concussion protocol concussion protocol concussion protocol so we're gonna Why check can't that you just out. say upper body injury yeah well i think when it comes to the freaking head injuries i don't think you can do that because they're cracking down on that shit right hmm. yeah okay drake batherson so we got hit by that clown from fucking from the sabers there aaron dell so remember how you actually called it last episode with the ankle sprains are sometimes being worse than the breaks. A high ankle sprain, yeah. He, and that's exactly what he has. He has a high. I seen his foot. Yeah. I seen his foot go one eighty. Like, yeah. yeah. His and toe was like, facing the boards, and his ass hit the boards. His toe was so, facing him essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So Batherson's going to be out. They're saying he's going to be out for months. Months. That's terrible. And that that's sucks because that, that kid was having a fucking great year. Yeah. So that sucks. So telling you, next time I play that team, that guy plays little chip in the corner. Let the goalie come out and fucking play it somewhere or chip it around the freaking net there. Let him come out and play it. And I would have somebody skate in from center ice and hit him so hard his helmet flew off. That's what I would do. And oh. then what happens? You fight. <laughs> that's how, that's what happens. And telling you, I think something's gonna happen there. That kid's a big part of their team, man. And Ottawa's yeah. been Ottawa's been good lately. They've been the thorn in the thorn in the side of a lot of teams lately. Did you talk to your brother and like your did your brother say anything about that whole incident? Yeah, I haven't really got a chance to shoot the shit with him about it yet. I'm going to. I planned on it. Yeah, but I was I was going to ask him what do you think about that hit because I guarantee you he's pissed because he likes him too, sure. right? Yeah. Um, I think Adam got it. I want to say got into a fight after that, like not too long after that. Mm-hmm. And I told Drew, how do you, we have a guy on the senators with the same last name spelt the same as ours and everything. And you don't have his Jersey. Like what is, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Um, also Carolina wore those fucking sweet green and white whaler jerseys last so night. Sick. Those things are fucking dope, man. Yeah. And the funniest part is like back in the day, we had been like, oh, oh, green, like the like Minnesota North Stars, right? It's kind of like that where it's like, oh, green jersey. But now we look at them and like, those are fucking sick. No, I, I love the Whalers jerseys. I had a hat. I had a Did you? Oh, Whalers the green hat. with the fucking double yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, with the whale on it. It was awesome. I yeah, loved man. it. I love those jerseys. He's greater. It was sick. Um, so, yeah, so they should probably I, – I would keep wearing those if I was them. Yep. 
Now you said there was a good scrap. There was be was it the Arizona uh Boston game? Was it McAvoy and Roussel? You said, right? They had a good yeah. one. There's a you hell know of a why, time. or was it just boom? Let's no, go. it was just it was just shit that was going on, and then the play stopped, and then the camera panned over to him, and Roussel was just pumping Charlie McAvoy. Yeah. And I mean, like right to the ground. Yeah. It, it was a great, great tilt, mm-hmm. you know. So, but Charlie didn't have much to answer the bell. Yeah, well, I don't think Charlie's much of a fighter either, is he? Well, then don't fuck around. I know, but hey, you got to give him credit for guys that will for fucking sure. stand in there and no fight problem. even if you get your ass right. kicked. And that's the thing with the NHL and fights and stuff like that is like, you could go out there and get pumped. <laughs> if you drop your gloves and you're going at it with somebody, the guys don't care. It fires up the room. Right. You know but you, I mean? you know, you know what, you know, what surprises me is that, um, Kadri didn't fucking pump Taylor Hall because Kadri's known for that sticking yeah. up for his teammates all the time. And that would have been what another eight game suspension. Like he don't give a fuck <laughs> and do it now instead of in the playoffs. But you watch, I, I, I if I anybody, if anybody gets Hall, I'm calling it now. It's going to be Yeah, I think what's going to happen is those two are just going to fight. Taylor. I don't want I don't want McKinnon to break his hand. So oh, but- I'm Cadre, and I'm saying, listen. Hmm. But Nate's Nate's probably the type though, where he's going to go out there and he's going to be like, for sure, I'll take care of I'm going to take care of this myself. He's that hockey player for sure. Yeah. And like to be honest with you, I kind of want to see them fight. It's two stars in the league. Let them go. It's it's fair. I don't know. I don't know if Hall's much of a star as as uh, Nate McKinnon. Obviously yeah. not. But I'm saying though, it's two guys, two guys that are skilled that mean a lot for their teams. Mm-hmm. Let them go. Fuck yeah. it. This the part that I don't like about when it comes to fights now in the NHL is they don't let you take your helmet off. They fly off in a fight anyways. You don't break up the fight. So what's the difference? It's the, when their heads hit the ice. They could still happen anyways. Sure. But Same risk. They, 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 it, it's a penalty now. If uh, I know, you yeah. get. I think. I think you get a two and a 10 minute attached to it when you do that. I think it's an unsportsmanlike. Yeah, you get an extra two, but you might get a 10 on top of it too. I don't know. I'll have to look at it. I'm just making shit up as I go. No, but it is an extra two for sure. It is an extra two for sure. Right. They don't um, want you spinning the buckets. But the thing is though, is like back in the day when guys, guys weren't breaking hands. You know what I mean? Guys are breaking hands and shit right now because they're hitting fucking helmets and visors. What are you gonna do? Mean, let them take let them take the lids off. I understand it's dangerous and this and that, but it's the NHL. And if guys want to fucking fight, they're but gonna they're fight. getting away from it. And like, remember when we had uh, Mark Ride out on here, mm-hmm. and he's saying, I, "I'm so glad my kids don't have to grow up playing hockey the way I played hockey." Mm-hmm. He's like, "I'm happy." He loves the way the game is now. Mm-hmm. The funniest so. thing is, though, is at the start of the year, fighting was up. Hmm. I don't know if it's still up made another note to look that up too, but I know at the start of the year, cause I, I think it was, well, when we did a show at the start of the year, I remember saying to you that fighting was up right? and it was, uh, it was only up a little bit, but I wonder if it's maintained that same fucking platform or if it's one up or down, but who knows, but um, last little thing for you buttes and beauties out here is Rob and I want to go watch a football game. So, the Leafs are looking at this kid from Owen Sound, eh? Is it Guzda or Guzda or something like that? But anyways, this kid's That's from Owen really Sound. Right. I guess he's fucking unreal. He's a 21-year-old, too. Like, he's, he's their overager. Oh, wow. But there's like, there's, like, 10 teams looking at him. Like, the Rangers are looking at him. Pittsburgh's looking at him. Everybody's looking at him. Are they looking to, like, have him go from the O straight up? Or? Right in. Right in. Oh, wow, eh? So yeah. he's, he's, Ready he's, to go. Sign him. He's that good, eh? Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's the first I've actually ever heard of him. So now I'm going to have to really keep an eye on him. Yeah. So now when Windsor plays Owen Sound, I'll have to hit hit the live stream of that game and watch him. Right. That's what I'll have to do. So which leads us to the last part of our show, which is always the beauty of the week. So, Rob, who's your – I have a feeling I know who it's going to be. but who's your, <laughs> You do know who it is. <laughs> who's, who's your – fucked your team over. Yeah. Who's your beauty of the week, Rob? Michael Bunting. 
hat trick, second career hat trick, right? So it just the kids, the kid is energy. Like every goal he scored, he was like, "Let's go!" Like it, it was awesome. Like Austin Matthews scores a goal, and he's just like, "Yeah, yeah." We're good. This kid scores a goal, and he's just fucking on the move. Well, because last night, every time he scored, he was tying the fucking game. <laughs> yeah, no shit, eh? Like, the, his one that hit him, and then he tapped in behind him, I was just in awe about it. And then Mitch Marner, when he gave him his hat trick, like, skating away, not even looking, no look pass, right in front of the net, but things going to the net, off the stick, it, like... I could have put that in. Yeah. I could have put that in. They're in sync, those two. Like you just have your stick on the ice and he puts it off your stick. You don't even have to move it. Yeah. Like he wasn't even looking. Like it it, it was insane. And I and I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I love them fucking pumping your wings. It was awesome. Don't get too excited, okay? It was awesome. It was seven. Just telling. Two of the goals were fucking empty netters, so chill out over there. I'm okay with that. Tavares is fucking hooped you. Oh, how about Bertuzzi making those two saves? He made a stack pass save. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm going to give him a fucking Vesna. That, yeah. yeah. So so who's your guy? Uh, my beauty of the week, I'm going to go with Vander Kane, just to say a, a big welcome back. He played a great first game, so I'm hoping that he continues to do this for his sake. He's good for the game. He's, uh, I like the way he plays. He's on the edge all the time. He walks that fine line, but the guy can be so effective. And, uh, I, like I said, I just, I love his game. I think when he's playing with freaking Connor, it's going to allow them to split up him and Leon. So it will give them a little more firepower on a couple lines. Cause now you can put Leon with Hyman and you can put Kane with Connor. Right. So you got a nice little. It was great. It's a great pickup. I just don't know about the locker room because everybody's so fucking happy when he comes to their team. Yeah. And then shit hits the fan. Well, hopefully shit follows a- him like flies and well, shit. I have a feeling he knows that this is his last chance. So I'm hoping that he does it right and he does it good. And maybe he signs on. Yeah, I hope so too. Game, so. I hope so too. He's a fantastic hockey player. Mm-hmm. He's or he's going to end up in the K. Yeah. That's you know what I mean? True. Or Russia or somewhere where you're never going to see the guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but get your shit together. So my beauty of the week is Evander Kane. Rob, before we go off the air here, let me get a couple picks for you for the uh, for the like football games today. Who do you got? I have Kansas City mm-hmm. uh, against Joe and Jack, mm-hmm. Joe Bodell and uh, Jack on Draca, and I have Casey's uh, at seven right now. I have Sam Fran. Uh, on both Jack and Joe, I kind of yeah. want Cincinnati to win. You want to? I picked. I picked the first game, so I picked Kansas City, yeah. and then they picked the second game. Mm-hmm. You want to know so. why I want Kansas City to lose? Because Patrick Mahomes' brother is a fucking douchebag. That's why. <laughs> why? Do you see some of the shit he does? No. Look. Don't even up. know who he is. Look him up. Okay. Right. Look oh. him up. He's a fucking douchebag. So that's why I want. Yeah, that has nothing to do with Patrick Mahomes. I don't care. You're his brother. So you guess what? My I'm brothers are all douchebags. Yeah, I got four. Of them. Your brothers. When I was on the live stream last night, Jamie popped on, and he was, <laughs> and he was like shooting the shit with me in there. So I was like, "Hey, fuck that!" Day. He's like, "Come over for beers." He's like, "I got lots of Coors Light." I'm like, "Hit up Rob. We'll line something up." So we're we're gonna all the brothers are getting together next week and uh, going over to his new house and. uh Hanging out in the barn and watching some hockey. That's what he was. That's what he was actually saying. He's like, "Come over, I got this spot." So yeah, yeah, we'll have we're to gonna go check up. it out. We're gonna take you up on that, Jamie. For um, sure. And you said you got San Fran in the other one. Yeah, I'm hoping but I didn't pick that one. I, I don't know if I would have. You know, they're they're Nate's boys, so yeah. I want knows? Matthew Stafford to win so bad. I I want San Fran to win for Nate. Because he's my boy, and he's been plugging away at San Fran for fucking ever. Nate's my boy, too, but Nate, fuck you. Go Stafford. Fuck Stafford. <laughs> hey, his fucking, his old lady whines too much. His old lady whines. I want to see him win just so I could say, so I could look at our fellow Lions fans and be like, see, if you had a fucking team around him, this is what could oh, be happening yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, all right, so Aunt Rob, we're going to sign off here. We're going to go watch some football, everybody, until next week. We'll see you then.
Take care. Go Lions. <laughs> I've lost my